It's Tuesday and the water behind our house has risen to about one metre further behind me. Um, the water's <coughs> threatening our house now, so it's time to seal ourselves in. The neighbours on right and left have about 50 centimetres of water in their house, despite having sandbags. The water's coming in from the back of this empty green space here. Uh, the canal is over there and the water's overflowing there, coming across here and through the back of their houses and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Uh, we're slightly lucky that we built our house one metre higher than the other houses and up to now we haven't any water in the house and I hope that stays that way. Muban Setter Kit now has flooded completely. <laughs> The water level is continuing to rise up to Pegaso. The water is heading off in all directions. I went over to the next site of ours. The flood water was covering the street quite ominously. And this is my friend's bar shop and I've got the steadily rising. A lost dog followed me back home. As the flood water rose, we started to put our plans into action. Quan optimistically filled in a little gap in our garden wall. Our neighbours' houses on left and right, dating from before the more recent and higher road level, started to flood from an overflowing canal, first from the back of their houses and also through the concrete floor and tiles. The sandbag walls built across gateways turned out, without exception, to be utterly useless. The main road entrance from Pegasame to Muban Setakit became a control post for both evacuees from the lower and badly flooded areas of Muban further away and city workers catching lifts on circulating pickups through flooded streets to the still dry road of Pegasame, taking anxiety for the homes, families and friends along to work with them. Residents returned from shopping trips or work on all sorts of vehicles with robust engines able to cope with the rising flood water levels back to their homes. The Songkran smiles of the first day's flooding had all but disappeared. The police, soldiers and community volunteers organised the comings and goings with confident efficiency. Some Muban residents preferred to make their own way slowly alone. Or with improvised boats and rafts. And some just couldn't help smiling despite everything. Street dogs and dogs separated from their owners looked on confused as their streets filled up with dark muddy water. Our own neighbours, fearing the worst was yet to come, unanimously packed up what belongings they could fit onto pickups and left their homes without hesitation. Bar's corner shop was still dry by the end of the evening but I feared the flood walls wouldn't be high enough. The shop of a local barber and seamstress was already full of water by evening. Her naturally cheerful character was overcome intermittently with despair. A makeshift dam was put across a passage. This would prove not to be effective. Quan and her mother walked together to 7-Eleven in the evening sunshine, the water in our streets looking as harmless as rainwater. 
our neighbour's truck sticker caught my attention, but after today, the words that came into my mind were, the people of Thailand always amaze you.